Hey everybody, Eagle Run 2-3 here. We have something unique to look at today. And I've just barely taken a peek at this thing and I don't know much about it. But uh, before I show you what's in the box, make sure you head over to eaglerun23.com, grab yourself a sticker, join the email list, and uh, let's take a look at what's in the box. Okay. Yeah, this is a Smith & Wesson SW9F. SW9F. This is the Sigma pistol series. And I had no idea anything about this gun. Never seen one shot one. I'm not a Smith & Wesson guy. But a friend is having some problems with this, wanted me to take a look at it. And so I figured I would uh, share that journey with you guys and see what we can learn here. We are clear. Really interesting look to this with this being all smooth. It's a big departure from a lot of the, uh, the new stuff that just has gobs of texturing and stippling and all sorts of stuff, but that feels, feels nice. Let's see what the uh, trigger feels like. Oh, it's got that uh, segmented trigger. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a, that is a trigger pull. Let's check the reset. L mile long reset. Huh. Okay, I wonder, boy, that, that looks, let's, let's just assume that this comes down like a Glock. It does. Oh my goodness. That looks exactly like a Glock. Hmm. Okay, so here's the story on this gun, and then I'm going to do a little research. We're going to see if we can fix it. So the story is, is that this gun is from the early mid 90s, which checks out with what we can see here. Uh, it has not been fired in 15 years. The last time it was fired, it shot it would shoot two, one or two rounds and then it would stovepipe. One or two rounds and it would stovepipe. So I'm not 100% sure how to fix that, but I do know that ejection issues are commonly linked to uh, cleanliness and uh, potentially broken ejector extractor situation, which we'll have to um, inspect. And I, those are just kind of the common things. Typically it's dirty or it needs lube or and less commonly, there's something actually broken with the gun. Before we go any further, I got a link for these. You need snap caps. If you're doing anything with firearms, you need snap caps. So let's uh, throw a couple of snap caps and see if anything obvious happens to us here. It 100% needs lubrication. It is very dry. And man, that looks just like a Glock. And that looks just like a Glock trigger. Huh. It comes apart like a Glock. It looks like a Glock. Goes together like a Glock. Got a bad trigger like a Glock. All right, let's uh, chamber a snap cap. Good. Okay, that one ejected. We kind of chambered a new round. Is it in there? It's in there. Holds open. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna go do some research on this and see if there's some common problems because Smith & Wesson is not really in my wheelhouse, but geez Louise, that looks just like a Glock. Okay, aftermarket Glock slide. <laughs> All right. Man, all right, cool. I'll be right back. Okay, after doing some research, guys, the reason this looks like a Glock is because <laughs> it's legally a Glock. All right, I'm gonna get you in here a little bit closer. Um, so apparently Glock sued Smith & Wesson over this gun that looks just like a Glock to me. And they won. They settled out of court, and Smith & Wesson, I guess, had to pay Glock some money. 
Now, I have no idea about parts interchangeability. That would be really wild. We're not really probably gonna go down that rabbit hole, but that that's really shocking. Of course, it's more like a 17 than a 19 on the slide length. What about the... So this is um, a 19X frame. And it's the same as, so it's probably just like a Glock 17, which I have one, but I'm, I've got one over there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get it out or take it apart. We just, we need to get to work on this, but guys, this is shocking. All right. So everything looks pretty good in here other than being incredibly dry. So we're going to lube this guy up and then we're going to take apart the slide up here and see what our extractor and our, well, here's our ejector. It does not appear to be bent or have any burrs or be missing anything. So I'm gonna assume it's good. Again, this gun has not been shot in 15 years. So sometimes whenever you have a gun that you didn't know and you put it away, I wish I could just go in the backyard and shoot it real quick. But unfortunately, I don't think my neighbors would appreciate that. Looks like the front kind of comes up a little bit. And when we have it on the frame, this is a Texas gun, so it's possible. Wow, and there's a big gap right there. Someone else who has a SW9F, I'm gonna have to go look at some pictures and see. Yeah, you can see it definitely comes up right there. So it appears to have a bow. I'm gonna take that out. We're gonna check on that ejector. And then this is real dirty. We might polish that ramp a little bit and see if we can get this clean. I may have to throw that in the Sonic cleaner. It's pretty, pretty scuzzy. All right, let's just clean it. Let's just clean it and go shoot it. Oh, we start out with the ballast stall. Pretty good already. We're gonna need to do some scrubbing down there. There we go. Looking good. All right, that'll help. Yeah, it's slick up there now. That'll help with feeding. And then let's run something down the bore check out the inside. I'm gonna send a little shot of, we'll send a little shot of oil down there just for a little coating. Being an older gun, I'm not really worried about rust, but it's always a possibility. Last time we were at Harbor Freight, we picked up these little picks and they have been quite handy just for checking down inside little parts. And there is a little chunk of carbon down there, right behind the extractor. So it's entirely possible that doesn't get a good grip if there's just even a little chunk of carbon down there, and there was, I hope that our problem is as simple as that. I could pop, um, it looks like it would happen, just like a Glock. I could probably take this off and, and check down in there, but until we know more, I think I'm gonna leave it right here. That spring, Looks like it has something in it. This spring is interesting. There's something in that spring to maybe dampen it or something. We could probably pop the pins out. We'll save that in case we have to. But yeah, there's something in there. I wonder if after 20 something years, if that degrades there's something in that spring also glocks do not have a spring right there 
the spring for the Glock like that is in the back. Now I also found, uh, as far as aftermarket support is concerned, the aftermarket on this gun never was very good. So there is an Apex spring kit, which maybe we'll do another video on this and see what the, the spring, what, what our trigger pull weight is. But um, for now, I think I'm gonna end this video here. We'll take this to the gun range and there'll be a part two where well, we may have to get a little bit deeper or we may be good to go. Maybe you just needed that little carbon. Sometimes it's nice when it's something simple like that. All of this is real smooth. It's just real long and heavy. <laughs> it's almost like a double action. All right, all cleaned up. That looks real nice. Let's uh, get my fingerprints on it here. Let's, action feels about the same. Trigger pull feels about the same. Long reset. Okay, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.